you a minute to write that down. We're going to solve this rational equation. And now we're, the denominators are looking pretty ugly. And remember, you got to factor the denominators in order to find the least common denominator. So I'm thinking that the two numbers whose product is a negative 10 and adds to be a negative 3. Product is a negative 10. I think those are a negative 5 and a positive 2. I think those are the two numbers. Remember, that's a trinomial. It's easy to factor because there's a, let's do this in green, because there's a 1 in front of the x squared term. You don't need to use the AC method. You don't need to break that down into a minus 5x and a positive 2x and factor it by grouping. You can, but it's a hassle, given that you can just put the minus 5 and the positive 2 into those binomials. This is the difference of squares, so it factors into x plus 2 and x minus 2. It's kind of a, a long problem, so I've got to kind of save some space. Um, over here now, I'm looking for two numbers whose product is a positive 10 and adds to be a minus 7. So their signs have to be the same for them to multiply to be a positive 10. They better both be negative signs. They need to add to be a negative 7. Better use a minus 5 and a minus 2. So there's my factored um, forms of the denominators. Let's go over here and let's write down what the least common denominator is for this problem. It's each binomial, the greatest number of times they occur in any one denominator. So there are no duplicates. Like there's not, if there was two x plus 2's here, then I'd use x plus 2 twice. But x plus 2 occurs once here, once here, I'll use it once. x minus 5, once here, once there x minus 2, once there, once there. There are three binomials. doesn't matter what order you write them in. I'm going to write them as x minus 5, x plus 2, and x minus 2. Now, if I could try a shortcut on you right now, I would love to do that. Would you picture multiplying this fraction by all three of those and picture what's going to cancel out with this denominator? So the x minus 5 and the x plus 2 are going to cancel out from over there. So what's missing or what's left? It's the x minus 2, right? So that 2x plus 1 has to be multiplied by the missing piece. And the denominators are gone, totally gone. So here, if I multiplied this fraction by all of that, those would get canceled out. So what piece is missing from over there? Yeah, it's the x minus 5. So this x minus 1 up here, it's got to be multiplied by that x minus 5. Denominators are gone because I have canceled them. I've removed them. I'm just not writing it down with green pen and showing that cancellation process. So when I multiply this whole fraction by all of that, this and this, these two cancel out. The piece that I'm missing is the x plus 2. So the 3x minus 1 up here is a binomial, and it's got to get foiled or multiplied by the x plus 2. So I don't know what's going to come of all this, but I better see if there's going to be an x squared term in it or not. And if so, then I've got to um, solve it by um, the zero product rule because I haven't learned how to use the quadratic formula yet or completing the square. So I'm going to FOIL this, so that's going to give me 2x squared. This minus 4x and plus 1x. Write it down if you need to. Minus 4x and plus 1x combined to be a minus 3x. And 1 times a minus 2 is a minus 2. So that is the trinomial that results when you FOIL that. Got a plus sign here, thank goodness x times x is x squared. Here I've got a minus 5x and a minus 1x. Write them down if you need to. A minus 5x and a minus 1x for a total of a minus 6x. And a minus 1 times a minus 5 is a positive 5. So that's that one foiled. And finally, 3x times x is 3x squared. 3x times 2 is 6x minus 1x. So again, 6x minus 1x is 5x, and a minus 1 times 2 is a minus 2. So I've got to collect my like terms. 
So I notice that over here I've got a 2x squared and a 1x squared. That totals up to be a 3x squared. And then here I have a minus 3x and a minus 6x for a total of a minus 9x. And here I've got a minus 2 and a positive 5. Those are like terms. They add to be 3. And on the right side, I didn't have anything to, to clean up or put together. But I'm now kind of looking at this and going, okay, am I going to have to solve this by factoring? Am I going to have to use the zero product rule? Well, when I subtract 3x squared from both sides of these equations, those are going to be gone. I'm not going to show that. So no, this is just a linear equation. It's got one solution. So I'm going to, I, I would choose personally to make um, the coefficient in front of the x term positive. So I would add 9x to both sides, personally. And so if I'm going to get my x terms over here, so the 14x over there, then I'm going to add 2, because I want that to become 0, to both sides. And so finally, this 5 right here will equal this 14x. And I'm going to divide both sides by 14 now. And I'm going to find out, don't divide by 5, divide by 14. And I'm going to find out that x is equal to 5 over 14. I'm not going to check that. Um, you know, you saw what happened last time. That just takes a good bit of work. Uh, let's do one more. I think we can do that in this clip. So one more that's pretty hard. I did forget to mention, I'm sorry, that my restrictions on the domain for this one, x cannot equal a 5. Right there, x cannot equal a negative 2. And then right here, x cannot equal a positive 2. My answers did not turn out to be uh, any of those three. My answer turned out to be 5 14s. Again, i got to check it. I can tell you that I have, and it works. All right, and let's go on. So let's go ahead and do another one. <coughs> And so here's what this problem looks like. Maybe you can catch up as I'll try to stay out of the way as you copy it so you can practice with me. Okay, so um, I factor my denominators. And these can't be factored. And I discover that this one is the difference of squares. So it can be factored into the product of those two binomials. So I'm going to come on over here, and I'm going to notice that my LCD is x plus 4 and x minus 4. Cool, that's it. And then just over here as a side note, I might tell myself that my restrictions are that x cannot equal 4 and x cannot equal a negative 4. So when I'm all done with this problem, let's check and see if that happens. I do have to be very cautious with this minus sign right here. It is um, plus a negative 4 times whatever I have to multiply that numerator by. Let's start right here, though. If I multiply this fraction by the whole LCD, the x plus 4s would cancel out. And the piece that's missing, or the x minus 4, is what would get multiplied by this x. So you'd have x times x minus 4. Denominator's all gone. It's, it's easiest when this is a monomial to just swipe, swipe that. And think of that as a negative 4. Now, this has got an x minus 4 in the denominator. So the x minus 4s would cancel, and I need an x plus 4 times that. That's the piece that was missing in that denominator. And over here, this denominator had both of those. So when I multiply this fraction by that full LCD, the whole denominator disappears, and I have just x squared plus 16. So again, I'm informally multiplying both sides of this equation by the LCD, and so I'm multiplying by the piece that's missing, because I know the other part will, part or parts will cancel out. Um, I have to distribute, and then distribute. And this is what sometimes people miss. They might not get the minus 16 if they haven't swiped, swiped that. Remember, it was a subtraction problem. And then I've got this x squared plus 16. Oh, son of a gun. I'm going to collect those two and call that a minus 8x. But I happen to see that if I subtracted x squared from both sides, those are going to disappear. So what I have now is a minus 8x minus 16 equals 16. And I'm trying to solve for x. So I'm going to add 16 to both sides. And so finally, I have a minus 8x equals 32, 
And when I divide both sides by a negative 8, I find out that x equals a negative 4. That's my solution to this problem through this process. But look at my restrictions on my domain. domain. X cannot is not allowed to be a 4 or a negative 4 because when you go to check it right here, you're going to get 0 in the denominator. So you have to tell me that there is no solution to this problem. And so that's why we're constantly listing our restrictions on the domain is in case we get an answer that is one of those restrictions we're, we're able to say to ourselves, oh, careful, there's no solution to this problem. Go. Cool.